Do you have something inspiring to say? Have you always known that your voice can contribute to the world? Is now the time? Yes, now is the time. The world is waiting for you. Welcome to the Inspired Choices Network Open Mic Spotlight Show. Today, we have an inspiring guest who is ready to share their voice with the world. Now, on to the show. Welcome, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Open Mic Spotlight Show today. I am your host, Christine McIver, and I have another unique, exciting, inspiring guest with us. Hey, her name is Becky Hurt. You're going to hear her in the background laughing. <laughs> and I'm so excited to bring all of Becky to the show. And I love doing these shows. If you've been listening to these different shows, what I've been enjoying so, so much about the Open Mic Spotlight, and, you know, I've been interviewing the hosts on the network, and I'll be interviewing other people, too, if they're interested. So if you've got something inspiring to say and you would like to be a guest, please do connect with me. Uh, you can do so at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. But what I've been really loving about interviewing all of these people that I quote-unquote know is I'm getting to know so much more about them. And uh, it's been so much fun. I think I have just about gone through three quarters of them. And the last host that will be interviewed will be me. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to be interviewing me. We've got something special planned for that one. But today, let's talk. It's going to be all about Becky Hurt. So Becky Hurt is a business and life coach, motivational speaker, a radio show host here on Inspired Choices Network, author, and an Access Consciousness Certified Facilitator. She finds great joy in working with people and organizations to discover what unique talents and capacities they already have, especially those hit things hidden from view. What sparks joy? What creates more for the life and living you desire? What is present that is holding you back and how you can choose to move beyond those things? What if choices and change don't have to be hard or a lot of work. What if it can be with total ease? Becky believes that just like a small chain cannot really contain a mighty elephant, the chains we allow to stifle us are likewise just a facade. They have no real power. Becky brings her own experience to the table, how she recognizes the chains that bind her, chooses to break free from those chains and to move beyond them. She continues to discover the joy of living as her, not as a contrived, created, fabricated version that someone else has defined. Her gentle kindness, combined with her intense presence and potency, when required, is a pure invitation and support for her clients to choose their authentic selves. She uses her talents to fan the flame for her clients as they step into creating and choosing more of their life and the life that inspires them. And you can connect with Becky at unchainedwithbecky.com. So, welcome, 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 my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. I, I'm really grateful that you're here, and I'm really grateful for everything that you do choose. And I can say um, one of the parts in your bio that was like, I, I felt like saying, yeah, she does that. She fans the flame. <laughs> <laughs> and she will be tenacious. <laughs> Not me, never. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. She <laughs> pretends that she's that sweet little thing. She's no sweet little thing. She's a potent little thing. That's what she is. <laughs> How much well, fun can we have, right? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Becky. You've got yeah. even the producer chiming in, right, about the... Yeah. Something Carol about like, and flames, and she's giggling. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sure that we're not the first people to ever have said that to you either. Nobody's ever told me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, they usually just say that I stir the pot. They don't quite call it fan in the flame, but yeah. Okay, maybe once or twice I've been told that. <laughs> just a and it's bit. really <laughs> just a little bit. Most of the time it's really fun, but one of the things I do before my show or classes or whatever is I ask, truth, am I willing to be or do anything that's required? And if I get a no, I 
I clear myself before I show up for anybody else, right? So yeah. it's fun because I really don't have a point of view about what that looks like. I And I am so willing to be and do whatever's required to to shift things, right? Life's too so, short. Cool. So what does it mean for you to, to really show up? Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, it means to show up in body and to show up and be present in a way that is um, not distracted, not I don't hold <laughs> don't hold anything back, um, and I and I'm willing to be with whatever people are there and whatever energies they are they're bringing. And so it's about being willing to be present with all of that. Whether And like with the show, it doesn't matter if people are on live or they're listening to the, to the replay. I cast a really wide net, mm-hmm. and I show up in terms of I'm willing to be with the energies of anybody that's listening live or on a replay. Mm-hmm. And it just... It's it's about being there. It's about listening. It's about asking questions. It's specifically about following the energy, and probably most important, it's about being in allowance of them and really having no point of view whether they choose change or they no point of view about what they choose at all. Right? So mm-hmm. they can choose something different. They can choose the same. It it it's all good from my perspective because it's their choice, not mine. My only right. job is to be there in a way that is an invitation for them to choose whatever is greater for them. Cool. So, Becky, I don't know that what? I've ever tried to put that into words. <laughs> oh, you love that? <laughs> I just so yeah, right. I just show up. What do you mean? You what just show up. What is it? What do you need? Okay. What do you got? Um, <laughs> is, it, is when you're when you're working with people and you're being present with people and you're showing up, whether they're paying you or um, or there's just somebody that's talking to you on the street. Is that work for you? Um, only in as much as people define it as work if I get paid for it. <laughs> and sometimes okay. I do and not always. But it really more is a natural state of being, just who okay. I be. Okay, cool. Awesome. So it's... So- um, it's not work, it's not labor, it's who I be, and it's a gift and contribution that... I be and bring to the world. Um, I The reason I kind of looped back around with that is because I made the comment one day that it was work and somebody got real upset that they had paid me for a session because if it wasn't work, they shouldn't have to pay me. <laughs> it just made me giggle on a whole lot wow. of times. But um, yeah, right? So now, so now I find that I have a little disclaimer. <laughs> oh, well, kind of work. <laughs> it's a business. It's not work. Right. Well, okay, we I'm going to stop go now. Into, you should ask me another question. <laughs> we could we could go into that for days, right? <laughs> right, 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 right. That's a whole other bailiwick. Right. So, so Becky, let's let's start at the beginning. Where were you born and raised? Uh, I was born in in Can- and raised in Kansas. Wichita is where I was born, and I was raised in a small town called Hutchinson. Okay. Cool. And um, are you one of many children? One of two. I have an older brother. You have an older brother. And um, what was it like for you growing up? What was your experience of the first part of your life? Um, wow. Um, <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> How's that for... It really, right, it's it's like all of us. We have things that are that work really well and things that don't. And um, my parents were married, like I know broken, quote, unquote, broken home. My parents were married my entire life until my father passed away, just shy of them being married 50 years. Um, and so, you know, had, um, uh, I was... Not when I was really little after that, was raised in a fairly conservative uh, religious environment. And, um, you know, it. Um, <laughs> I find religion is something that everybody has a point of view about. And um, what I what I think of when I look back to that is I am so grateful for the gifts 
that I received from that and from the contributions. It taught me to be a fabulous um, public speaker. It taught me to, how to relate to people. Um, I really, um, yeah, I just, I got, I learned to be a good student, learned to be a good communicator. Um, I was presenting in front of very large groups at a very young age, and so I, I love that in terms of the, the gifts and contribution. And um, and there was some abusive things, not not at the hands of my parents. Um, uh, there was some abusive types of situations, and um, and I just get it that um, what all of that was, all of that has contributed to who I be today, and um, part of what. I, I believe I came to contribute to the world. Um, so, like, I think there's a whole new dialogue about abuse that's asking to happen on this planet. I define abuse, I should probably clarify this. To me, abuse is anything that keeps you small, keeps you from being you. It's mm. not necessarily what everybody has identified as the categories of sexual abuse or verbal abuse. And I'm not saying that stuff's not. I don't have any, like, I'm not asking for a fight on any of those topics. I just get it that there is a way that we can tune into the potency of who we be and we can put all of that in um, an energy that doesn't have to rule our lives. Right. So is this something, this this whatever you experienced uh, growing up, is this something that started from a very young age when you were a teen? Uh, I was four years old the first um first experience with sexual abuse that I encountered. Okay. And, and went on this, through... It, oh, okay, that was my next question. Yeah, I just went on throughout my childhood, throughout my teenage years. Right. So I would, I would imagine that it um, obviously had an impact on who you are today and um, what you what you have desired to create in the world absolutely like one of the biggest impacts i'm sure is i for a long time have been a huge advocate of children's issues um and you know it's just like um i know most of the, most people that are alcoholic would tell you that another alcoholic can spot them right away right it's the same right. thing with kids right they just know they know if you know <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I don't know how else to say that, but like early, early on, um, I had a resonance and a capacity to work with children and to help them choose beyond current um, situations and events. Um, and in more recent years, I, I helped um, create and really um, exponentialize a, a charter school for kindergarten through eighth grade that's located here in the Asheville, North Carolina area. Um, which is all about um, arts integrated education. And the piece to that is finding a way, it's a different modality of teaching kids. It's not teaching kids arts, it's about teaching them how to learn using the artistic world. And, and the kids, the students that we were able to reach through those modalities were amazing. And so I remember when I got done with that project telling somebody that I really felt like I could die and know that I had come, I had done what I came to this planet to do. Because um, it just really, really made an impact on kids and their love of life and gave them, you know, whatever. You can tap into the energy of that. So from that mm -hmm. to also more recently, I work with autistic kids, kids who don't necessarily communicate in traditional ways and kids who have been abused, et cetera, and, and help teach them how to tap in and be all that they be and not have to mm -hmm. be governed or victimized by um, adults other people in their world nice nice I love that yeah. what what a contribution it's, and a gift that is and you know a lot of us um, look for the reason and justification why things occur and and we could get into that deeply um, I just want to say thank you for the gift that you bring forward um, you know sometimes making lemonade or lemonade um, with our life whether it's something really intense or something um, that just happens, you know, from breathing. Whatever that is, thank you, Becky, for that yeah. contribution to your being in the world. That that we we require more people uh, choosing to to change uh, what's not working. So we are going yeah, and, for our. Sorry, go ahead. 
I just I just want to say about that that the other thing that pops is that you know if if it's if it's us or if it's somebody else you know I just I encourage people to never quantify it. It's not a right. What if it something only has to happen one time to change the life of a child? Something only has to be mentioned once. Something it abuse does not have to be a repeated pattern. It often is, but it doesn't have to be. And so what if what if all of us could be a gift and a contribution um, to children or young people or e- even those of us who are adults, right? Once they tap into whatever that was that kept them limited, what if all of us could be the energy of invitation to encourage and invite them to choose themselves, to choose something beyond whatever that was, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. Um, I... <clears throat> Yeah, I just really encourage people not to go into comparing their outsides with my insides or vice versa or their story with this story or whatever. Because whatever we've been through, that's what's important to us. Right. Right. And so what if we can be the magical invitation, the magical journey, the adventure to tapping into the beyond and the unknowns of the the expansiveness of whatever's there without looking at whatever that um, that experience or quote unquote limitation might be. So right. anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're all we're always looking for yeah, the comparative and it's not re- required yeah. for sure. Yeah. Okay, we are gonna go for our first break and when we get back we're gonna dive into more things all about Becky Hurt. So please stay tuned. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Do you have something inspiring to say? Would you like a taste of being one of our inspired hosts? Get on the air on the Inspired Choices Network Open Mic Spotlight Show. The Open Mic Spotlight Show is your time to shine and inspire our global audience. Shows air at 9 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each week. Claim your spot today. Simply contact our network owner at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Forget the days of five minutes of fame. Now you can have 55 minutes of things. What if choices and change don't have to be hard or a lot of work? What if it could be with total ease? What is possible for your life if you could be unchained from your limitations and past choices? Do you know that you can start creating and choosing the life you desire? By tuning into the Unchained with Becky radio show with life and living coach Becky Hurry, You'll receive tools and inspiration to become unchained, free, alive. Are you ready? Listen for the Unchained with Becky radio show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, and 12 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You are listening to the Open Mic Spotlight Show here on Inspired Choices Network. To call in and ask questions, call 815-880-8255 in the U.S., 613-800-8736 in Canada, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking around today. You are listening to the Open Mic Spotlight Show. I am your host, Christine McIver, and I have a wonderful guest Becky Hurt here today, and we are talking with Becky and all the things um, about Becky, and we were just starting on her life and and where she grew up and and where it took her is where we're going next. So, Becky, you're now a a young woman. Now, where do you go in your life? What did you start to choose in your life? Um, I I actually, career-wise, I I spent a very long time (laughs) In um, in business, I love I love business. I love strategy. I love building relationships, and so I was in corporate America for about thirty years. And for um, I I did some advertising and marketing work early on. Um, left left Kansas at the age of thirty and moved to Hilton Head for a very short little less than a year before I discovered that there were just a gazillion tourists there. <laughs> And there were just way more people there than I wanted to dance with. And um, one of Kansas' best features is Colorado. <laughs> For those of you yeah. who don't know U.S. geography, they're neighbors. 
Um, and I love the mountains. And so um, I wandered up to the Appalachians uh, and settled in the Asheville area in the mid nineties and, and did a 18 year stint with a global, with an international business uh, company and um, managed the reuse division of a plastics company, which enabled me to tap into um, and actually discover what um, what an enthusiasm I had for sustainability issues and environmental issues and and just looking at how daily choices could totally change the planet that we live in. And so um, I got to do that and to be my business brilliance um, at the same time. And I also got to travel around the world. And so that was that was um, an amazing experience for me. That sounds so cool. Like like, like it, how you could see the choices and the impacts so clearly in that. Yeah, and well, and part of my job was kind of um, um, I my one of the things my department did is they did education for people about how the program worked and what the benefits were, and so we were talking to people on a daily basis who may not see a financial advantage to anything we were asking them to do. So um, I got to practice being really charming <laughs> <laughs> and to show them what the benefit was. So. Part of my daily spiel was talking to people about the environment and how things that we had always assumed to be true about environmental footprint and all that kind of stuff maybe weren't what we thought they were and how it was possible to look at a bigger picture. And I had the privilege of being involved um, with a university board who was one of the first in the country to have a sustainability graduate program and you know those kinds of things. And so that... Um, it was just amazing. Um, I remember when I told my dad that I was going to work for this company and um, he got kind of quiet because the Reader's Digest version is I was dealing with plastics and cardboard and he got kind of quiet. <laughs> and my dad had a fabulous, fabulous sense of humor always. I'm so grateful for that. And I just remember him saying, well, it, is it fun? And I said, I think it will be. I think it could change the world. And he's like, well, if anybody could do that, that would be you. And he laughed mm-hmm. and and found a different topic to to talk about. And um, and I the it sounds so status quo now. This was in the mid nineties, and a program that we were tapping into, and a, the initiative that we were taking. Not a lot of companies were doing at that time, so it was fun to be. I've always been probably a bit ahead of my time, um, and it was just fun to be in that environment and to really start to see how, like I said, day-to-day choices could make could make such a difference in um, mm-hmm. environmental issues. Very cool. So that was fun for me. Yeah. So you stayed in that world for like until how long? Like, is, have you been out of that world I've, for ten years, five years? Uh, twenty fourteen. So. Oh wow. Um, I had, yeah, I had prior to that, um, probably five years prior to that, started kind of tapping into some of the worlds of um, uh, of energy and finding out what that would do. And I had some health things going on in my body. And um, and I had, you know, there were things that I had therapy to death that still just kind of had a hold on me. And so I um, turned to a friend of mine one day and she mentioned maybe going to see an energy healer. And I was like, that felt really light. And I went to do that, and 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 I remember telling him, it's like, look, I'm not sure. I have therapied everything to death. I'm not going to beat pillows. I'm not angry. I don't, and there's something still with my body where it just won't let go of something. And with that kind of vague, <laughs> that vague description, um, he did a session on me, and I knew when I got up off the table that my life would never be the same. <laughs> um, I felt, I felt different, and I felt like I had freedom from some, again, physical things that right. had really kind of um, haunted me, and and um, and um, and then I found out about access consciousness, and I and I took a bars class, which is for people who may not know, thirty two points on the head, and it just releases things that have been kind of stuck there, and after that first day my fight or flight was gone. Like, Mm. not just better, not manageable, it was gone. 
And I didn't even realize it until my chiropractor pointed it out to me. Hmm. Um, cool. Because he had this little thing where he'd have me hold my breath. <laughs> and by the time I did that for 45 seconds, I was hyperventilating and all kinds of crazy. And one day I did it and he said, you can let it out now. And I did. And he said, sit up. And I did. And he said, what did you do? And I said, I don't understand the question. And he said, what did you do? And I said, I still don't understand the question. But he said it slower as if that would help. <laughs> and, um, and I remember laughing, and I said, I'm sorry. And he said, you just held your breath for 45 seconds, and you're not even breathing hard. What did you do? And I went, oh, well, how cool is that? And the only thing I had done is attended that one-day bar class. So I'd had my bars run twice, and I had gifted them twice. And to this day, that was in 2013, to this day, fight or flight has not come back. And I used to not be able to sit with my back to the door. I wouldn't even be in a room of people with my back to people. I would always, I was keenly aware of everything that was going on around me um, because I didn't like people to come up from behind and catch me Mm -hmm. off guard. And so, so that, that cleared that. I, um, I started learning about, I spent almost a lot of 2013 in Canada, expanding our business into Canada and, and I was just doing a lot of what people would call soul searching and asking questions about what was next and what I was here to do. And and um, it just felt like there were big changes. And I learned about the clearing statement, which is just a little magical energy way of getting things out of the way that stand in our way. And and um, and I was in Newfoundland and asked for anything and everything that stood in the way of me having all of me. Um, having my soul back, just meaning all of me, and it stood in the way of my heart singing and being happy that whatever that was would just disappear. And um, I I felt like somebody picked me up by the feet and yanked (laughs) and hung me from the rafters. Um, And I felt, I just knew that things were going to change. And um, and, um, about five or six weeks later, they did. And um, so the situation at work shifted and changed, and um, I was able to start just to – I was downsized from the corporation that I worked for, and it was done in such a way that was such a gift to me and um, was able to just really look at what I wanted to create and what I wanted to be in the world. Mm -hmm. And it was much more having to do with children and energy and helping people choose more and create more and – um, I love helping people create business, and I really love working with other corporate refugees. <laughs> um, as oh they look God. at, <laughs> I've never heard anybody say that? Oh, that's I... it. I'm a refugee from corporate America, right? Oh and it's God. not business. <laughs> I love business. I know. I love business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's just not the same, and it's like there's. Yeah, there's just so much that can be created and brought into the world and so much potential. So anyway, so I was able to start to kind of tap into that and 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 look at that. And I still, I mean, it's still every day, you know, I keep asking, what do I want to do be create in the world today? What, what would I like? My, if I could have anything, what would I like my life to be like? What would I like to choose as having my life? And it, it always makes me giggle what, you know, what shows up. And it's not always fun. It makes me giggle because it's just, more, it's effervescence. It's like it's like a bottle of soda and you watch the bubbles, like 7-Up or whatever. It's mm. that. It's that natural effervescence of life that, um, that, that gets to show up when I'm really being me and I'm not being what somebody else expects me to be or somebody else thinks I should be or what right. the corporate tagline is or whatever. When it's just me, could better ugly (laughs) when it's just me so that's amazing well i've got i've got a bunch of questions i want to ask you when we get back um now that we've got a a a larger uh platform from which you you've created your life and yourself and what's been the catalyst um so everyone stick around we get into more all about becky hurt when we get back you are listening to the open mic spotlight show here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will be right back. Stay tuned. 
Do you have something inspiring to say? Would you like a taste of being one of our inspired hosts? Get on the air on the Inspired Choices Network Open Mic Spotlight Show. The Open Mic Spotlight Show is your time to shine and inspire our global audience. Shows air at 9 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each week. Claim your spot today. Simply contact our network owner at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Forget the days of five minutes of fame. Now you can have 55 minutes of fame. What if choices and change don't have to be hard or a lot of work? What if it could be with total ease? What is possible for your life if you could be unchained from your limitations and past choices? Do you know that you can start creating and choosing the life you desire? By tuning into the Unchained with Becky radio show with life and living coach Becky Hurt, you'll receive tools and inspiration to become unchained, free, alive. Are you ready? Listen for the Unchained with Becky radio show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, and 12 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You are listening to the Open Mic Spotlight Show here on Inspired Choices Network. To call in and ask questions, call 815-880-8255 in the U.S., 613-800-8736 in Canada, or Skype us at Inspire Choices Network. Now back to the show. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking around with us. We are speaking with Becky Hurt. Becky has a wide variety of skills and talents and capacities and definitely a colorful life that she has created to bring her to the moment in now, in 2017. So, I have a question for you, Becky. I know that you bring your voice to the world. You have a radio show called Unchained with Becky, which is so uh, articulately written for you. Uh, it, it certainly speaks to um, the life that you created um, from a young child to today and um, and how you've changed it. And And I love that. Um, now tell me, Becky, what is inspiration to you? Hmm. You mean what inspires me or inspiration nope. is, inspiration what is inspiration is what, to you? Inspiration is what makes me want to be up out of bed in the morning. Inspiration is what makes me go, oh, wow, yes, this is why I'm on this planet at this time. Inspiration is the moment when you know, when you just know that mm. when I know that I have been able to touch somebody's life in a way that they will never be the same in a good way. <laughs> mm. um, when I've been able to contribute or invite them to something else that helps them show up and be the gift that they are for the planet at this time and in this space. And it's just, it's, um, you know, I've heard that why isn't really a good question because it goes into justification, but I would say that inspiration for me is my why. Hmm. Cool. I like that. Why often is that word that takes us down into the poor me's, but this one does Mm -hmm. actually have us look deeper into that. Um, I like that. So, yeah. so tell me, what is inspiring to you, Becky, about you? About me? Oh, that's a <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. why you don't give us questions before we do this, because then we'd say, no, I'm not answering that. <laughs> <laughs> you sneaky little witch, you. <laughs> I know all your tricks now. <laughs> Uh, that's funny so um, what inspires me about me is kindness um, uh, caring for the world not just the planet itself but the people on the world um, people on the planet and and whatever affinity or connection that I have with children 
that inspires me. So what about your affinity about you with children? What is that for you? When you, if you were to step back and look at you with children, what is it that inspires you about that? <clears throat> oh, I think I'm touching a chord. You know, these, I, I'm not, I'm not an easy interviewer. <laughs> um, and these questions, um, are, are sometimes questions that have people look at spaces and places that they, maybe haven't looked at before. So if that's what's occurring right now, mm -hmm. how does it get any better than that? There is that, and I have been, I actually do look at this. I just don't ever talk about it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Well, yeah, thank you for um, being vulnerable today. Yeah. The, it's uh, My friend Susan Lazar Hart outed me not too long ago on, I think her, I don't know if it was her radio show or mine, but one of them on this network, um, and she said, for those of you who don't know, Becky is baby whisperer. And um, so since then, I've been playing with the energy of that. And there was an article written in um, uh, a magazine in Australia about that and really looking at what that is and what that is about. And um, I have an amazing capacity. with It is with adults, too, I have to say. But there's something precious about when it's with kids, which is to be able to communicate with them with no words, to um, to meet their meet them wherever they are. So, and I have this interesting point of view about autistic kids. I don't think they're slow at all. I think they're so fast they cannot slow down to be with us on this planet in a way we think that they quote unquote should. And so, the ability to communicate freely and quickly and in amazing ways with those little people um who perhaps don't even don't even speak um and I'm not talking about just babies I do work with babies too and oh my gosh they're so fun cuz they have no point of view about anything other than what works for them <laughs> mm -hmm. they don't have all the coulda shoulda what is right um, mm -hmm. so it's the ability to, to be able to connect with them and to teach them I've worked with with pre pre-birthed and I've worked with babies as early as a day old um and any anything on the scale after that, where it's just really about teaching them to be them, and so with and asking the mom questions in terms of things that allow the baby to be at peace or to just kind of tap into all of them. Children are so aware of everything seen and unseen on this planet before we teach them that they shouldn't see it. Before they teach them, we teach them that they shouldn't be aware of it. And so, part of the capacity I have is to tap into. A kids, children, and to just let them know that they're amazing, mm -hmm. that their gifts and their capacities are right on target, and and there's nothing wrong with them, and just to kind of encourage in a very playful way their ability to step outside of that. And so it's been anything from helping an autistic seven-year-old um, start to ask to go to the bathroom, for example. That's a really basic one, but um, had always been in diapers and did a little session with him, and he then was able to ask on his little iPad communicator to go to the bathroom. That, I don't think I will ever forget that moment. Um, recently met this amazing little less than two-year-old Down syndrome, um, and oh my gosh, he's there to change the world. And two little amazing seven-year-olds from Canada that I met in October, and they're here to change the world and in amazing ways and it's it's just about reaching them where they are and helping them step past the delusion of fear and really being able to tap into who they are mm -hmm. and i get that's not very concrete i don't know how to explain it in concrete terms but those those capacities um that's what inspires you those, about you yeah and and even i, like I guess to transcend that into the adult world i do I do have a capacity to help people see things differently, to help them tap in where they might not have gotten it in another way. And um and that that is fun. It's it's cool, it's amazing. Sometimes sometimes it's a little surreal. <laughs> Cuz it's like is that me? Um 
yeah, so those are the those are the kinds of things that inspire me to keep showing up and keep looking at what I can do and be differently or how to help somebody have a different conversation about or for their business, right? It's all about how can people see things differently than what they've always thought was status quo and how they can just explode their life in a in a fun, expansive way. That's mm-hmm. That's, I guess, the capacities that inspire me about me. Mm-hmm. But it, and it all comes from the, it's just a kindness and a caring that um, I have always been told about, but only recently would acknowledge. So does that inspire you about you too? It does. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm so glad that yeah. you chose that. I think it could actually be fun if there were a few more. Like that brought that, and what would it take, right? So yes, it does inspire me. Thank you for asking the question. Wonderful, wonderful. And I am um, happy to report I am not even under my desk sucking my thumb or anything. I am sitting here <laughs> like a like a grown up in my chair, with like all a big the girl, <laughs> with, all, with all the squirmy questions. Right? Yeah, so <laughs> well, then there's you, that. You know, one of the things that I know about. I would say every one of the hosts, because on on the network, I, <laughs> Carol, our <laughs> producer in the chat room, she's she's been working with me for several years, and she's always like, wait for it, wait for it, <laughs> she's going to come. It's better than um, saying assume the position. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Wait for it. Mm-hmm. Say next. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the one of the things that um, I, I pride myself on saying is that all of the hosts on the network, I, I have a, a personal relationship with and I, I do know them. And um, not that I know everything about everyone, but one of the things that I know about most of these amazing, amazing individuals is that they're not always willing to honor themselves by by, by looking at what does inspire them about themselves. So I'm so happy when I hear uh, people that will acknowledge them and and the contribution they're being in the world because that just gets us all of us to have more of that so that makes me very joyful so uh, my next question for you um, Becky is what is important to you in the world Hmm. it's a big question I know what was the first (laughs) <laughs> well, the first thing that popped actually is we just talked about that, <laughs> which is, um, you know, I just get it that, that there's there's so much going on in the world right now and on the planet, and there are so many little, there are so many beings in little bodies that are just here to change the world, and um by their contribution, by their energy, by their um, curiosity, right? The the energy of being curious, and and so you know that's that is what's important. I don't much to some people's chagrin that know me. Um, I don't get overly activated about political conversations or not even necessarily social situations in the world. It's not that I'm oblivious to them. I don't, please don't send me 9,000 emails telling me to be responsible. Um, It's not that I'm an ostrich. I don't bury my head in the sand. What I do is look for what's possible to contribute to it. And so the importance to me is about exploring the planet. It's about exploring life. It's about looking at life through my eyes and that of others um, like an adventure not a task list, but an adventure, um, and just and seeing what opens up, right? Seeing what I might have missed, see what's available, and <clears throat> beyond what I have experienced before. And you know, most people that know me know me. I'm I'm pretty quick to jump off a cliff. <laughs> um, I love change, not just change for the sake of change, but. Um, so what's important is what else is possible. What else is possible mm-hmm. for us? What else is possible for the planet? And what else is possible for people and these amazing little beings that are here 
that are just ready to take us someplace that we've never been on this planet mm-hmm. before. Right. Mm-hmm. And and also for myself and everybody else, but right. One of the most important things I've been playing with lately is what would it take for us to all to stop underestimating ourselves and to all really claim that we have something that nobody else has. I have something nobody else has that I came here to bring the world and be willing to look at it. What is it? And what does it take to put it out there? doesn't matter if anybody buys it or not. doesn't matter if anybody's interested. If, what did I come to bring? And what do I know that nobody else knows? Those questions aren't unique to me. They just have been popping for me a little different in recent uh, recent months. So that's cool. that's what's important. It's about it's about showing up. Showing up. It's just about showing up in my life. And nice. and letting being in total allowance of me, where I have been, my choices, where I am. What if I don't have to beat myself up about that? And also about being in allowance for other people for Sometimes their choices don't make me happy. <laughs> total allowance of where of where they are and what they required in their choice. Mm-hmm. Right? That's that's it. It's 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 about allowing people to choose and they're gonna choose what they're gonna choose and I s I get to choose what what Works I choose. Yeah. Right? Cool. So how fabulous is that? Right? So how cool is it that I'm willing to extend to others? It's important to me to extend to others the kindness and the allowance and the generosity of spirit that I would like everybody in the world to have and receive. How amazing is that? Man. To have to have people wanting and willing to to be and do that is phenomenal. Mhm. It just is. Yes. Yeah. Cool. And I think there's more and more showing up every day. And so what would it take to get them to come out of the closet? <laughs> and come and, play. and right to come and play and be willing to color outside the lines and to get out of the box and to quit hiding and just be willing to be us to be me to be you regardless of what anybody else thinks about it it's like yeah. oh well here i am I, you know what i would really love is for you know 20 years from now for us to have less people in therapy than we have today oh my gosh <laughs> absolutely right? Right. That is. Yeah. And no, you know, no disrespect to therapists anywhere. No. Uh, And how cool would it be if it were an obsolete profession? (laughs) Okay. So for everybody that's going to call us and get mad. (laughs) No, and now I'm not saying it's it's not about that. Well, so let's spin it. What if they're so good at what they do? What if they're so good at their craft that people are able to heal beyond the current traumas in the world? That would that that is a possibility I I am aware of, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I have lots of respect for them, and I have lots of friends who are in an assortment of counseling and um, therapy types of roles, and they all know that it's not personal. And they probably would say, "How cool would it be if it were an obsolete profession?" Hmm. That's awesome. Right? Okay, because we are going to go the very for thing a... that puts them there. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I just say the very thing that drives them to those professions are their desire to to contribute to people. So, True. Yeah. So how That's cool not, would that be? That would be. Yeah. Very, so very okay, cool. I'll take the emails. If you really feel compelled to call me and give me a tirade for that, I welcome <laughs> it with open arms. I'm <laughs> guessing you're not going to change my point of view about that, but bring it. I'm cool. <laughs> you are cool. I read that. <laughs> All before. of it. You are cool. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? The bathroom wall. I told you, don't believe what you read in there. I'm going to believe that one. Okay, we are going to take our <laughs> final break of the show. When we get back, we're going to wrap up with Becky Hurt and find out what <laughs> she's creating right now in the world. Stay tuned, everyone. We'll be right back. Do you have something inspiring to say? Would you like a taste of being one of our inspired hosts? Get on the air on the Inspired Choices Network Open Mic Spotlight Show. The Open Mic Spotlight Show is your time to shine and inspire our global audience. (laughs) Shows air at 9 a.m. on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday each week. Claim your spot today. Simply contact our network owner at info at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Forget the days of five minutes of fame. 
Now you can have 55 minutes of fame. What if choices and change don't have to be hard or a lot of work? What if it could be with total ease? What is possible for your life if you could be unchained from your limitations and past choices? Do you know that you can start creating and choosing the life you desire? By tuning into the Unchained with Becky radio show with life and living coach Becky Hurt, you'll receive tools and inspiration to become unchained, free, alive. Are you ready? Listen for the Unchained with Becky radio show every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Central, 1 p.m. Mountain, and 12 p.m. Pacific on InspireChoicesNetwork.com. You are listening to the Open Mic Spotlight Show here on Inspired Choices Network. To call in and ask questions, call 815-880-8255 in the U.S., 613-800-8736 in Canada, or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. Now back to the show. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome back to the crazy show with Becky Hurd. <laughs> no, this is the open mic spotlight. Sometimes it might feel a little crazy. We are having so much fun, and I can't believe we only have a few minutes left, Becky. So tell us what you are creating in the world right now. What classes? Oh, my gosh. Um, wow. It's it has been like a creation marathon as of late. So lots of things popping and pinging. One thing we're doing is we're spending a, a year with the topic of um, Justin Ipov, which is interesting point of view. But the idea that the in, our points of view create a reality, not the other way around. And so we developed a membership program, very affordably priced to go over years to start looking at our points of view about um, we've been talking about bodies and families, and we're going to talk about money and business and sex and all kinds of fun topics um, to help us clear those. Um, also, um, I mentioned the abuse dialogue is asking to change, so I am launching um, a series of abuse workshops, and the first one of those is going to be debuted in Columbus, Ohio, two and a half days, and includes a PTSD workshop session. and. We've been having really great results with helping people choose differently around that. And we've got 21 Days of Play coming up, which is about helping people bring their projects into creation and in, into life. And business workshops, because I love business, one called Stop It, <laughs> and one about choosing beyond all the excuses. And, um, and I'm a right relationship facilitator, so we've got some relationship stuff. Um, and just today I had a conversation about starting a retreat format. So we're going to do some seven-day immersion retreats um, to change whatever you want in your life to change. So lots and lots and lots and lots. Like, it's keeping me up at night. How fun is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all. That's, that was before breakfast today. So um, <laughs> um, I, <laughs> I would just invite people to keep up with my website, Unchained with Becky, also launching BeckyHurt.com. Um, in the in the near future, um, lots of ways to play. There's just so many things that just light me up, and and can't forget the kids, right? So doing some workshops, baby whisper workshops, almost in the form of play groups for moms and babies, and um, it's I'm so grateful to those little beings that are showing up because they're changing my life, and uh, I can't wait to see what they do with the world. So. Um, I have been hiding for a very long time, and I'm done with that. Cute, cute, cute. And so now it's just like, oh, my gosh, once I made a choice to stop hiding, things are just, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy town. <laughs> it's, it's a good um, yummy yeah, crazy, so, yeah? <laughs> oh, it's fabulous, and it's and it's fun, and it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. So, and, um, and I'm also taking... I've chosen to take my business globally, so I'm also looking for people who are willing to host me in other um, states and wow. countries, and um, okay. that's an interest. There I am. That's awesome. Okay, you can connect with Becky uh, Unchained with Becky Hurt on Wednesdays here on the Inspired Choices Network. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you, Becky. Wow, that was really fast. Goodbye, everybody. See you Yay, next time. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Open Mic Spotlight Radio Show. 
We will be here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 a.m. Central, 7 a.m. Mountain, and 6 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, continue to create you with joy and inspiration.